Oh, finally, a main character. Yeah. But. Impious. Sorry, lad, but this is not going to be fun for you. You're not in a good place, you know. In fact, you're not like that. You could be something like. Something like this, or. Yeah. And yeah, why not? Oh, wait, there you have a nice tattoo, and also this is a present for you. Okay, uh, bloop. Now you can get out there and play with your new fellas. Grunt. Butchnich. Sna. Grukluk. Or Ferret Trek. Good luck. Or oil lads. At this point, I wanted to have the main character already working, and there were a couple of decisions to be made regarding game design, art, and technique. The first is that, okay, you have an inventory and equipment, but I know the hassle that comes with clothing and deal with many different armor models. It's a lot of work for a single dev to keep track of many equipment pieces that need to be modeled, weighted, and fitted to each other. And as I prefer to have fewer things but better done, it was a no-go from the beginning of the project. That's why I decided to kind of attach the suit to the character with nails and braces, making it look grittier while fitting the aesthetics and making more sense. Same applies also to haircuts. Like, safe heads make more sense in this context. And to be honest, I tried just in case, but I couldn't manage to make a proper hair shader that works and looks good enough. Well, the initial scope was to make it sort of realistic to fit the global aesthetics, but absolutely not even close to any super realistic AAA games, obviously. But in the way that is good enough to pass the uncanny valley until it's somewhat decent. Okay, I'll try to be really really quick and sum up the creation process. First, I made the head, and I wanted to make the skin hand painted to have more control later in the future. And also, I wanted to get rid of the substance painter workflow as I was going to be tweaking the model constantly, updating the sculpts and UVs, so I decided to stick 100% to Blender for the whole process. For this, I used a couple of helpful add-ons that I bought in the past, which are the PBR Painter add-on and the Bake Wrangler add-on. I used the Bake Wrangler add-on to bake all the maps I needed to tweak while painting and for the final sport texturing. It's a pretty good add-on that gives you a lot of freedom to bake, combine, and export whatever map you need. This way I was able to tweak the sculpt or whatever, and then rebake everything to continue with the texturing process. For the PBR Painter, I used a big alpha version that was released just at that point, just because I was going to need a lot of layers and that version came with a good performance boost and features in exchange for some instability. But it saved me a lot of time, definitely. A kind of realistic skin painting is quite time consuming. You need a lot of layers and patience, keeping everything really, really subtle. So I split everything into different folders to control color, roughness, normal detail, and then the mouth itself. Note that the Blender renderer differs a lot from the Godot one, so it would require a lot of in-engine checks, and that's why I didn't want to have a third software in the middle like Substance. I just wanted to work in Blender, press a button to bake everything, I'll tab and check the update. I know the head is not that well done, it's not that realistic, but if you want a more in-depth breakdown, let me know in the comments. Moving on, I did the same process for the suit, like design, model, UV, sculpt, texturing, and baking, sporting, everything inside Blender.
For the character rig, I used Auto Rig Pro, quite a powerful add-on that makes things quite simple to begin. But let's be honest, understanding the rig, customizing it and adapting it to your needs is such a difficult task. So I struggled a little bit with it and still, but at least this add-on brings a proper base to work with and has a sporting support for Godot which works pretty good. Also, it has some retargeting tools that helped me to get some basic Mixam animations working and that's a joy for terrible animators like me. As I knew I was going to support the character parts, animation and the rig one million times, I decided to extend my pipeline script to just export what I needed with a single click. I recommend you lads to automate repetitive processes as much as you can. Such simple tasks like the selecting, selecting, performing export, checking if it's okay, verifying the file name, exporting and checking an engine, all of this takes a significant amount of time in the long term, put you out of focus and the most important, it takes a lot of mental strain. I might make a video on that in the future, so tell me if you are interested. I also created another custom script to automate the importing process, like removing unnecessary nodes, assigning materials, assigning properties, and saving all the animations in the respective folders. So, what I have here is a character base that contains just the skeleton and the common nodes that the rest of the characters will have. So then I extend this one into inherited characters with different specifications, like the character in creation mode that would require a bunch of bones attachments. Then the player itself, NPCs or enemies or whatever. The skeletal meshes are assigned afterward as a child of the skeleton, so I can have different modular meshes for other NPCs or enemies while sharing the main nodes. Jumping to the animation tree, I had a whole tree built with a lot of nodes and stuff, but this piece in Godot is a pain in the neck to work UX-wise. Tiny screen that you can detach, tiny grabbers, pop-ups. I must be honest, I'd say this is one of the pain points of working in 3D with Godot. I hope this gets rebumped at some point because animation management is complex. So I decided to keep it with the minimum nodes as possible and then manage it by code as much as I can. What I have for now is a very basic setup, just a 1-2-D blend space from idle to walk to run. Then a time scale to control the base locomotion and adjust the speed of the character. A blend 2 for overriding the whole animation. A blend 2 for overriding the whole pose. Another blend 2 for overriding facial expressions. And a blend 2 for overriding the weapon holding pose. All of that with custom bone filtering that I set up by code. It's pretty clunky, it's not pretty good, it's shit actually. But all of this will be fully reworked in the future, so it's okay for now. Finally, I wanted to set up the basics of the character customization. I tried to port some work from my character creation project, which link is in the description if you are interested, but it's quite outdated and it's quite messy, so there is a lot of stuff that can't be directly related. For example, in that project I was tweaking bones based on their transformations. But in the newest versions of Godot, there are major changes regarding this. Some things will be deprecated, so I have to stick to the new methods. I do really like this way of editing the character, like grabbing bones and stuff, but honestly, it has become more difficult to manage with the new methods, like reversing transformations of the children bones when you scale them, or setting proper limits to what can you do. So at this point, as it's not a core feature of the gameplay, I'm keeping this on hold for now and I will see if I do a full rework on the future or move to a more traditional and boring yet easier method to handle this. We'll see. Then I made some basic slider based customizations and as a tip, I found that just sampling a gradient color could be the best way to blend values and edit them easily. Obviously that green color was just for the crack, nobody is going to be green in the game, don't worry, don't worry. 
and nobody is going to have the cox tattoo either. And finally, for the tattoos and highlight parts and subtle and features, I used my old substance painter. This time I needed it because the brush painting in Blender is pure garbage and doesn't consider mess normals, so it leads to inconsistent painting and glitches everywhere. So the thing here is to duplicate the mess as many times as you want, scale and offset the UVs to create an atlas, and then mask what you need, painting directly on different channels. For example, I'm using that blue channel just for the highlights when you hover something. Then I'm using the red channel for the tattoos, and then at this point the red is one just for the stubble hair, but I could use it for whatever. Because then it's just a matter of scaling and offsetting that UV in the shader material, and then setting the blend you need. And I think that's a wrap. Um, by the way, just to say, the Steam page is up, so I would really appreciate if you give me a wishlist or share this project if you are interested. Uh, also, don't forget to subscribe if you like the content. See you in the next video. Cheers!